England at this time was a brand new country. It had not been ruled as a, a united whole for long at all. And it's crucial to understand that that was part of what was happening with this reform. The reform was being used by the king, by the leaders of the reform movement themselves, to help to consolidate this kingdom. The big monasteries were central places. They were the stable central places within the kingdom. They were places of royal power. They were places where kings came, where meetings were held, where laws were passed. But they were also places of great sanctity. So the reform of the church was led by the king himself, young King Edgar. And he was supported in that by two men, probably in their 50s when he became king. And they were Dunstan, um, a nobleman from Glastonbury in Somerset, who became his Archbishop of Canterbury. And Avalwald, um, a, a nobleman from Winchester, who became his Bishop of Winchester. They were inspired by what was going on elsewhere on the continent at this time, where people were interested in promoting Benedictine monasticism. Um, monks who were living according to vows of poverty and chastity and who did not own their own property. And they were also establishing these monasteries on the edges of where King Edgar was able to, to extend his rule. So they were partly being used by him almost as outposts of his rule to help to consolidate it. Many of the most spectacular manuscripts that survive to us today were produced in these Benedictine reform monasteries. And they are a product of an intellectual elite who were producing manuscripts of great beauty as well as of intellectual courage. It's very clear that the reform movement was only a tiny part of the story of the church at this time. The reformers wrote most, and it's their voices as historians that we can hear most clearly. But if we go out into the landscape and look at the churches and listen to the voices that are, are quieter, we can see that actually most churches at this time were small communities of priests who did not live strictly according to vows of poverty and chastity, but instead had wives, they had property, they engaged in worldly affairs. And so the reform movement is only a small part of this story 